how to make a flowchart in Google Drive. This is a good one. Hey, it's Ozzy here from thecomihost.com where I talk about the tools that I'm using to generate income online as a solopreneur. And in this channel, I share tutorials and all the great tools that I keep finding. So if this helps you in any way, please subscribe and I'll keep you posted. Okay, so in this video, I'm going to show you how to create a flowchart using Google Drive. Now, there are some videos out there already about how to make a flowchart using Google Drive but they focus on the process. Now I'm going to show you exactly how to do that, but there is one problem and that is that the Google Drive tool that we're going to use to make these flowcharts is quite basic or rather the end result looks basic and well design wise it looks very poor. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how to create the flowchart, then I'm going to show you how to prettify it, how to make it a little bit nicer. OK, now also creating a flow chart using this tool in Google Drive can be slow and tedious. OK, you have to be clicking things. So I'm going to show you some tips that can increase uh, or improve your workflow. It's going to enable you to make these workflows. Sorry, it's going to enable you to make these flow charts a lot faster. And then I'm also going to show you some extra things that you can do once your flow chart is created. OK, so let's get to it. OK, so the first thing we're going to do is go to Google Drive. If you haven't already, sign up for a free Google Drive account and that's going to give you access to the tool that we need to create our flowchart. OK, so here we are in my Google Drive and when you log into your Google Drive, you'll see pretty much the same layout. Now here on the top left, you see the new button. Click on that. And here you have a list of tools that you can access from your Google Drive account. Now I see Google Docs, Google Sheets and Google Slides. You can make flowcharts using Google Slides, but we're not going to use that in this video. So let's click on more. And here you'll see another drop down with even more tools. Now what I'm going to use is Google Drawings. OK, so let's click on Google Drawings and open that up. And this is what this looks like. OK, so let's give the untitled drawing a title. So let's call it um, flowchart. OK, so here you see a canvas and this is where we're going to create our flowcharts. Now, the three or four tools that you're going to use most are the select tool. Once you click on this, you can click on a shape and move it around the canvas the line tool, the shape tool and the text tool. Now you can hover your cursor over any of these icons and you'll see a little tooltip, a little bit of text that tells you exactly what to do. So do play around with that. And if you want to see the full extent of the menu, just click on the menu text and actually go through it. OK, there's quite a lot to see there. OK, so let's create our basic flowchart. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to click on the shape icon and this is going to give you access to various shapes. So I'm going to go to shapes and I'm going to create a rectangle. OK, so all I do is select that, then hold my mouse down on the canvas and just draw a shape as big or as small as I want it. So I'm going to let go here and this is what happens. OK. Now you'll see that by default, the select tool is selected. That means I can click on this and just drag this shape around. OK, if that's not happening for you, then just click away from the shape, click on the canvas and then hover your cursor over the shape until you see it turn into a cross and then just hold down and move it around. OK, so let's start with a classic flow chart. I'm going to do a simple one here. So I'm going to draw another shape. Let me go back to shapes and click on this one. Now, this is a nice thing. You'll notice that as I draw here, you'll see this red line. And this is a guide to help me create a shape exactly the same size as the other one. OK, you see that if I go over here, it's slightly bigger. But if I just bring it in a little like this, I get a red line. So I don't have to guess where that corner is. Now, still holding my cursor down, I can 
drag down like this until I get this. And this tells me that this is now the same height. So I can let go and I have my second shape here. Okay. Now, if this shape was slightly misaligned here, I could select this and just drag it along here until I get a red line. And this tells me that it's now completely aligned with the shape above it. Okay, great. Fantastic. Now I'm going to create a line or rather an arrow. So let's select an arrow and let's go from here, from the middle to here. Okay. In fact, I want to change that now. I've changed my mind. Oops. I've just created another arrow by clicking on the canvas. You have to be careful sometimes. It's a little bit trigger happy this app. Okay. So I've changed my mind and I want to change this shape. Okay. So here's the first tip. You can right click on that and get up a context menu. And what I'm going to do here is change shape and change it to a rhomboid. If I can see it, there it is. And this is going to be our logic gate. This is the yes or no portion of this particular flowchart. Okay, so now I'm going to draw two more shapes. And now let's select the arrow tool. More arrows. This is going to be, oops. Let me do that again. <laughs> okay. A bit of failure there. Let me. Okay. Let's do this again. Okay. So here's one arrow and let's do another arrow. Okay. So I did. <laughs> okay. This, as you can see, by the way, it's not the easiest tool in the world to use especially when you're doing things step by step like this, by clicking on everything every time you want to create a new shape. So I will show you a work around that in a moment. Uh, but yeah, just be mindful that it can be a little bit fiddly. OK, so here is our flow chart. Uh, there is something missing, isn't it? There we go. So this is a flow chart. We're going to add a little bit of text now. So I'm going to click on the text box here. I'm going to drag this inside here and I'm going to call this find video. Okay. Then I'm going to select another text box. Now, let me just show you something. If I click on the text box and I click on the screen, this is what happens. You get a massive text box. Okay. And this is why what you should do is click on the text box and then hold your cursor down and just drag that into the size of the text box that you need or that you want. And that's going to give you control of how that text box actually looks. OK, so don't let the tool control you. You control the tool. OK, so I'm going to put that here. No. And two more final text boxes. Okay, so the flow chart is quite simple. This process here is going to be find a video. Then when we find a video, we have a logic gate. Do we watch this video? Yes or no. If the answer is no, then we search again until we find a video and then we go through the process again. If the process is sorry, if the answer is yes, then the process is watch the video. Okay, so it's a very simple uh, flow chart that illustrates a decision. Now, as I said at the beginning of this video, it does not look that sexy. OK, so there are some things that we can do to improve this. Um, and also we want to be able to improve our workflow because it took a little bit of time to do this and there's no need to take this long. So let me start by showing you the improved workflow. OK, I'm going to hold my cursor down, select the entire canvas and just press return to or backspace rather to delete the entire thing. So this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to click on shape and I'm going to choose my first shape. Now I'm going to draw this shape manually and I'm happy with that. OK, so the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to hold down command and C. If you're using Windows, that's control and C. 
and that's to copy this shape to my clipboard. You can also, with the shape selected, go to edit and copy, okay? Then you can go to edit and paste or just do command or control and V. I'm going to do that once and I'm going to do that again, okay? So I have all the rectangles that I want in my flowchart and that just took a few seconds. Okay, so now I'm going to paste again and this of course is another rectangular shape but this time i'm going to right click the shape and go to change shape go up to shapes and select the rhomboid okay so note the whole point here is that i'm not using the menu i'm not clicking on shapes and using the drop down menus to select the shapes that i want i'm just doing the first shape manually and then just copying and pasting as many as I want. Now here's another tip. If you're creating a big flowchart, the easiest way to do that is to move your shape to the bottom of the canvas like this, then copy that shape and then start pasting. It will paste wherever the shape was copied from. And then you have all the shapes that you need. You can always delete the ones that are extra. Okay, so this is the basic flowchart. Now we want to do a few things here. So let me just show you something. I'm going to select both these rectangles. I'm going to go to the arrange menu here in the top and I'm going to go to align and align the tops. Okay, so that's aligned the tops. That's pretty cool. So that's looking a lot better. Now let's click on an arrow. Okay, and let's draw our first arrow. Now, with the arrow still selected, I'm going to click on Command and C or Control and C, and that's going to be copy. OK, now when I click on the canvas, it's copied the arrow again. I'm going to do that again and I'm going to do that again and again. I have arrows everywhere. OK, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to position these arrows where I want them. I can hover over the pointer and just hold down and just move it to what I want this way okay and you can use the dots here as guides to position this arrow head on the middle in the middle of the rectangle finally we're going to do some text here so let's start very quickly I'm going to um, align that text to the center okay now I'm going to select that text box again and copy to my clipboard I'm going to paste one two three okay so that's okay we have an extra box there I'm going to delete that and the way I'm doing that again is just selecting the text box and then just pressing backspace to delete it okay ah I shouldn't have deleted that should I so I'm going to do Control and Z to undo or Command and Z. And that text box was actually for here. What I'm going to do here is make these text boxes a little bit smaller because they're overlapping with the text box in the rhomboid. Now notice you see that again, as I move my yes box here, you can see these blue lines. These are visual guides. I can see that everything is perfectly aligned. Okay, so this looks a lot better. This is the same flowchart we did at the beginning, but it was a lot quicker, significantly faster. And keep in mind, of course, I've been talking through each step. So obviously that adds on time, but you can do this very, very quickly. Now, let me show you some cool things here. Let's say that uh, all this wasn't in the center of the canvas. You can hold your cursor down on the canvas and just select the entire thing and right click and go to group. Okay, so click on group and this has created an entire group out of all these shapes. So if I click away from the canvas, now all I have to do is click on one element and drag it on the screen. And because it's grouped together with all the other elements, it moves everything. So instead of having to select every single element and then trying to position it in the middle of the canvas or wherever I want it, 
just group them. You can always ungroup them again by right clicking and clicking on ungroup. OK, now similarly, if you only need to move these two, then you can group this and move them down or up or whatever. OK, now you can also right click a shape and the context menu there will give you access to lots of other different things that you can do other actions including rotate you can rotate this shape like this and then quickly undo that by doing control or command z if you need to and that might be handy with certain shapes and certain arrows for example or lines you can quickly rotate them around i do recommend that you right click on a shape and you explore the contextual menu and look at all the actions that you can use and then you'll know which ones you'll be using more and more. So I do recommend doing that. Now, one cool thing here is that you can actually also add links. So I've just clicked on the yes text box and I'm going to click on link. And here I can do a link to, let's say, um, let's say Google. I always use Google as the example. <laughs> So I have a million links to Google from all kinds of tests and examples. So you can add links and that might be handy when you export this as a PDF. OK, now when it comes to prettifying this thing, making it look a little bit sexier, then you can right click on anything. OK, let's right click on the shape here and go to format options here at the bottom of the menu and this will open up a window on the right hand side and you can see here that you have various options including changing the size locking the aspect ratio okay changing the angles the one that i use the most is the drop shadow okay so let's actually select every shape okay every shape and go to drop shadow and you can see that every shape has a drop shadow and that looks a lot better. Now, again, if we go back to that menu on the right, you'll see that we have all kinds of things that you can do with the text to make it look better. Uh, give it padding, give it left, bottom, right. And you can also add a reflection if you want to. OK, so I'm going to do that there. That looks a bit crazy, uh, but it's just the fact that you can do it. OK, so as far as the flowchart goes, this is pretty nice. Even the text has a drop shadow there, you can see. Uh, but, you know, flowcharts are flowcharts at the end of the day. Um, they're not really eye candy. OK, so now let's look at some of the things that you can do once you finish your flowchart. If you use Gmail, this is particularly handy. You can click on share and share this link with anybody that you know. You can also copy a link to it and email that link. That's a private link that anyone can click and then use to see your flowchart. And you can also email this as an attachment. If you use Gmail, you go to file, email and email as an attachment. And you can also go to file and download and download this as a PDF. I've just done that. So I'm going to click on the PDF to open it. And here is the final result. The hyperlink that I created looks naff of course uh, but it does work i can hover over it and click it and that takes me to google but seeing what that looks like you can prettify that link by making it a lot smaller and maybe put it out of the way now if you need to create a bigger flowchart you can use the corner of the canvas here to just click and hold down and move around to change the size of your canvas so that's how you make a flowchart using google drive using a free tool, which in this case is Google Drawings. I hope the few tips I give you help you create a faster workflow. And if you like this kind of video, please subscribe to the channel. And that way you can stay up to date with all the great tools that I keep finding. But in the meantime, take it easy and I shall see you in the next video.